next speaker. Not that I'm averse to spreading rumors. I mean. <laughs> oh, our next spe speaker needs no introduction. He's my best friend in the world. Uh, Susan Gerbic uh, is, uh, she's been called the most powerful woman in skepticism. <laughs> and if you know her like I do, it's very true. You cannot, cannot argue with that. Recently in the past three or four years, she's just done amazing stuff. And I remember when I first met her, she was like, what can I do? How can I, what can I do? And now she's just like all over the place and she's indefatigable is the word I think <laughs> To use for. She's got so many things going on. She's only going to talk about one of them today, which is something we sort of worked on together. Uh, it has to do with psychics. So let's bring her up. She put this together. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get the microphone. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw this or not, uh, but. I don't know, anybody here know Deepak Chopra and Rupert Sheldrake? They hate me. And I'm not kidding, they really do hate me. So, um, we're doing it right. Huh? We're doing it right. We're doing it right. Well, all of you are getting calm. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm going to be speaking to you today about something I pretty much just made up. Audacity, right? Um, this is called Operation Bumblebee. And Operation Ice Cream Cone, and there is no reason why I chose those names over another. They just sounded stupid. And <laughs> just, just went with it. So let me think that, is there, oh, it's this thing? Okay. This is Chip Coffee. He is a, what Mark and I call, a grief vampire. These are the type of people who are not just at your local, oh, not just at your local uh, school. Or, your local uh, uh, psychic fair or your local, you know, mom and pop thing like this one across the street over here. These are people who, who communicate with the dead, or, well, they say they communicate with the dead. These are people that are just egregiously wrong. Just, no. These people need to be taken out off the streets and off the TV and off the reality shows and off of Facebook and off of everywhere. They're just wrong. It's, it's really bad. So. I put together a sting, two stings, and a few people in this room did participate. And uh, I'm going to try to get through this very quickly. So, Chip Coffee, grief vampire, bad guy, been on TV many times. He is, uh, he tells children that, you know, like those, those ghosts you see, well, they're really dead people trying to talk to you and you're actually a medium yourself. And, you know, it's like, to me, that's child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Paranormal state, psychic kids, Scary man, look at those eyes. I mean, look at those <laughs> eyes. That's scary. I've got big blue eyes. Those are freaky, okay? <laughs> All right, so, I guess I'll go this way. Okay, so what Mark was telling you earlier about how psychics can get your information that you have on your own personal sites, and they can take that information, and they can look at it, and they can get a story from it, and they can learn all about you, and then they can re repeat it back in a, a room like this. They can say, hey, I'm getting something about this, and somebody in the room will go, that, that's me, okay? So what I was trying to do is I wanted to prove that, I mean, we know psychics aren't real, right, okay? I wanted to prove that psychics use hot reading, and hot reading is when they get your information from someplace else, like Facebook, or talking to your sister, it's or pre-show. It's pre-show, yeah. So I wanted to prove that this is possible to happen, and I wanted to catch them. They've done. We've seen it on the internet so many times, but it wasn't planned. It wasn't like they were set up for it. It just like somebody just happened to have the video running at the right time and saw the the, the pre-show and see the the hot read. I wanted to prove it, and here's how I did it. Uh, has anybody read the Monterey County Skeptic blog where I went into detail about the chip coffee event we went to? Okay. Yeah. Well, two. Okay. So uh, I have a blog that is extremely detailed about this, what we did, but I don't reveal the behind the scenes because when I wrote the blog, we still were we were still doing more work, so I couldn't reveal what all was going on. 
We went to go see Chip Coffee. Jan, where's Jan? Jan and I and some people in LA and another person named Sheldon who, who's in uh, the Sacramento-ish area. Uh, we went to go see the Chip Coffee event in San Jose and then I had a group of people go to the LA event. We went in with fake personalities um, and we had a lot of things that were happening behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, I had months ago, oh, four or five months before this, created fake Facebook profiles on, that were not linked to us, our personal selves at all. I had people from all over the world helping me, Australia and um, all over the uh, United States helping. They were creating these fake Facebook pages and we were talking to each other, we were posting things and we were, we looked like believers, but not so much like believers, just like regular people who really might believe in psychics. We had an absolute blast in this, but it was tedious and time consuming and just incredibly difficult. You have to keep the pages looking alive. You have to be posting every day or so. You have to talk about your cat. You have to talk about what you're eating. You have to, I mean, think about all the stuff that you would normally do on a real Facebook page and just escalate it. We had to talk to each other. Greg was also one of the ones that was uh, creating a page, and so was Jay. And we were pretending we knew each other. We were talking about the days when we were growing up. We were talking about how what kind of pizza we had. The other. It's just crazy. Really hard work to do, but we did it. So what we did is we, we created a scenario where um, we were talking about our families that don't exist, that are dead, and we were creating them in the hope that Chip Coffee's people would uh, look at the Facebook page and then when we went to the event, he would repeat it back to us, we would have it, we got him, we would be able to like totally come out and say, look, he's hot reading. So we created these fake personas Jan had a, uh, a woman in New York who was creating her page, um, and she had a sister named Linda, 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 who had died in the World Trade Center. Tower 2. Tower 2, thank you very much. Uh, we had uh, Sheldon's mother was dead, and Sheldon's mother's really alive. I had a child named Matthew who was three years old who had uh, died many years ago. It turned out the pictures that I uploaded were of my real son. There and he is. There he is. He's alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. It's a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle. People in LA had, had fake people also. So once we had created these pages, and there's so much to tell you, I just don't have the depth of time to explain it, but I'll happily go over it with you. And I also have a couple articles coming out on this in Skeptical Report magazine, and we're hoping it's going to get picked up by some major reporters so that we can get this out there farther. But you can see. Um, on Eventbrite and on Facebook, when you buy your tickets for these sites, look how easy it is. Connect with Facebook and tell your friends you're going to go. <laughs> All I got to do is look at the darn Facebook page and pick out, like he said, pick out one or two people in the audience that are going to be at the, at the show and then say, oh wow, look at this one's got something good. Here, how about this one? This one's got the World Trade Center. Let's do that one, you know? So we were on Chip Coffee's Facebook page. Are, is everybody here a Facebook user or are comfortable enough to kind of know what I'm talking about? Oh no, it doesn't look like there's a lot of heads nodding. But when you tag things on Facebook, then it, then it shows up in another place. I'm tagging Chip Coffee's event page. I'm saying, oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm going to go see Chip Coffee. This is so exciting. So we're doing this over and over, tagging Chip Coffee, but to an extent that we don't want to overdo it because we don't look too crazy. But enough that it looks like we're believers. We had to misspell things. We, I'm not kidding. We looked at a lot of Facebook pages of believers, and boy, oh my gosh. <laughs> it is scary. Their English teachers are shaking something. <laughs> so we went in with this. Uh, you can see Chip Coffee. The reason why I use Facebook, almost 400,000 people like his, with his Facebook page. 400,000 people. Of course, I'm one of them. Jab's one, Greg's one, uh, uh, Jay's one, you know, we're all kind of one, because so a few of those are fake. Our so here I am. Our pseudonyms like him. Yeah, our pseudonyms liked him. Here I am, I'm wearing my fuzzy thing. I had to be a little outrageous because we had, the LA crew went down first, and then I went, and Jan and uh, Sheldon went. Uh, a couple of the people from the Bay Area went, and Sterling went too, but Sterling was in the back seat as a witness more than, more than you know, because we had to prove that we, if we caught him, we had to prove we caught him. Oh. He was here too, also. I forgot what you were saying. Make sure you talk about the first show and then. Okay, so there was a first show. They didn't call on um, the psychic, uh, Chip Coffee didn't call on um, 
the people that were there, but they got a lot of information. Emory Emory and, um, and Heather. Heather Henderson and quite a few other people went. This is my VIP pass. <laughs> A hundred and sixty dollars. Oh, jeez. I raised the funds on the internet because I wasn't paying it. And we, we bought, we spent nine hundred dollars. Mm. All to chip coffee. Like you chip coffee. So here why, I am. Why did you spend that much, Susan? Because I wanted VIP seats. We got a picture with them and everything. <laughs> here's my here's my sons. My son I'm going to meet. I want, I'm dying to meet. I had to be outrageous. <laughs> Okay, so here's, I'm not going to go into too much depth, but these are some of the kinds of posts that we had to do on Facebook to let him see him. We're putting him under his nose as much as we possibly can. Um, hey, I dreamed of your son. Hugs, kisses. We had to do angel wings and hearts and all sorts of stuff all the time. Here's another post um, where we're leaving information about Jojo, the puppy dog that I hope is with uh, Matthew and and. Oh, I mean, October is the anniversary month. I'm really missing him so much now. Oh, here's a post where they're talking about how, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to go see Chip Coffee, Psychic and Medium. So Chip Coffee can see that on his Facebook page. And I can't wait. We're going to be there on Tuesday. This is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, this is great. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to go pick up John, and we're, and we're going to go, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, these are all fake people. Okay, John Toon, who knew the great... Here's John. He's he showed up the event. It's actually Emory Emory. We wrote his Wikipedia page. He's a comedian down in LA. I love this guy. Here's his fictitious brother. I think he was trying to meet. Uh, tagging Chip Coffee again. Okay. So we're trying to get Chip Coffee to see our stuff. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to control. We're scientists, right? Okay. Well, I'm not. But we're trying to make sure that if Chip Coffee looked at our stuff. He wasn't able to say, I got it because I read your mind. You know? You were just thinking about it, weren't you? You were thinking about it. You were thinking all this stuff. And then he'd have an out. So what we did, I think this is clever. <laughs> I thought it. We locked down the pages so that the people who attended the event could not see their Facebook pages once they went into the building. And once they went into the building, I, in Salinas, checked them in in LA, and Jay checked the, the San Jose crew. <coughs> he, was in a, he was in a bar somewhere a few blocks away. I don't know what he's doing. But he wrote some stuff on our Facebook pages that I could not see. The people in LA could not see their posts. They didn't know what it was that was being put on their Facebook page. Double blind. It's a blinded thing. So, so what we were trying to do is we were checking in at the Biltmore Hotel, at the Chip Coffee event, and leaving one tiny thing that Chip could have pulled up and used, and it would have been perfect. But it would only have come out of Facebook, because the only person who knew what was written there was me, and I was 300 miles away. That's the only person who knew what was on there. And you can see, I love this place. I came here on a school field trip as a kid. So he could have easily have turned that around and said, I'm getting somebody who was here as a child on a field trip. Bingo, we got him. Okay? And then here's another, I'm hoping to hear from my late Cinder Win Linda. This is uh, Jan right here, Janet Welsh. I wonder if Chip Coffee will talk to my great friend and my departed feline, Catla. This is something, something Jay wrote. <laughs> hoping to hear from my sweetie, Catherine. Uh, and then here we are at the Chip Coffee event. Yes! We had you go in. It was insane! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Look at those blue eyes! I'm gonna wear blue so I can take my picture with him. I mean, it was insane, and the people all were like that. Crazy. Here's Jan, and here's Sheldon. They had never met before, but they were like the best buddies. Oh my god, Sheldon! Oh no, I'm sorry. Wade. 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 Okay, so she's meeting up with Wade. Here I am with my with chips, holding my purse. He thought it was funny. This is after we already caught him. Okay, we did not catch him in a hot read. We did not catch him in a hot read. What happened is, and you have to read the blog, he saw Sheldon's mom, who's dead, who she isn't dead. He saw Matthew, my son, who I don't have a son named Matthew, who died at three, did not see him, had a full conversation with him, and he saw Jan's uh, 
sister, Linda, who died in the World Trade Center, when she doesn't have a sister who died in the World Trade Center named Linda, or anything like that. He saw all those. And we caught him on those, big time. But we didn't get a hot read. He did not look at Facebook. Mm -hmm. What happened is worse. Right behind us, and I'm just going to mention this really quick. It's in all the blogs. There's several blogs out there. There was a woman right behind us who was crying uncontrollably. 20-something-year-old young woman. And he asked her, do you have a young, tall man that you're hoping to see, that you're hoping to get contact with? And she says, yes, and she's bawling. And he already kind of knew this. The reason why Chip caught us, you know, he was able to find our family members is because we went in talking about it. We we're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see my Matthew. Oh, I hope I can meet my Matthew. You and know, you we had were, pictures of him. Yeah, and I had pictures of him. So we were really building it up and telling the people in front of us and so on. And so that's there in neon colors. Yeah. And so, so that's why Chip was able to pick on us. But this girl, too, he did the same thing. He, was, she said, he said, I'm getting a young man. She says, that must be me. Turns out. Her boyfriend had died in a car accident five days before. Mm -hmm. She paid $160 to come and see Chip Coffey and talk to him so she could talk to her, her, son, her, her boyfriend. Her mom was there too with her, bawling their heads off. It was disgusting. And Chip has the gall to say, is he tall and he's got dark hair? She says, well, he wishes he was tall, but he does have dark hair. He goes, well, he's appearing to be tall. He's right there in the back of the room! He's tall now. <laughs> he was appearing to be tall. And he's, he's haunting you. He's coming over to the topic because he loves you so much. She's falling. I mean, talk about disgusting. And then he tells her, I think you need to contact me in a few weeks for a private reading. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Forget to tell the line about the course. Oh, and he says to, he says to the uh, woman, why am I, my, my spirit medium is telling me that line, live, live fast, die young, leave a beautiful corpse. He told that to a woman whose boyfriend is not even cold. Well, I guess he's cold, but I mean, you know what I mean? Five days. So this is why we do this stuff. Okay, so we weren't done with chip coffee. <laughs> he couldn't tell I was a uh, skeptic. Yeah, he, he had no idea. Creepy, creepy guy. Okay, if I go a few minutes long, I'm not going to take questions. I'll just, I'll just go up. You're all right. You got no, okay, I got a minute. So we said, fine. We're going to do it again. We got these beautiful Facebook pages, all beautiful. We locked them down. We did all these crazy things with them to make them so that they were, so we're ready to go again. This time, I wanted to do a phone reading. So I picked out a psychic long story, but I found one that I that I decided was media savvy enough. He had a Facebook page. Uh, he looked hungry. You know what I mean? He looked like the type that might take a chance. And so we put Facebook page, we cleared up the chip stuff, and we went back and we did uh, a medium, his name is Tim Braun. Never heard of that. But he's recommended by James Von Frog. James Von Frog is another psychic medium who doesn't take private readings anymore, probably because he's already been caught so many times. But he is endorsing this guy. So I'm like, okay, let's, if we can get this guy, then we kind of get James on Rob, Prog. So we go and I decide, Heather, who lives in LA, she's gonna do the psychic reading. She's great, she's, she's got it. So she's doing the psychic reading. We go through her Facebook page for a couple months. And this is Operation Ice Cream Cone, by the way. And we went in and we, we uh, went like crazy, you know, oh, uh, we want to, uh, Heather wants to see her son, Andrew, who died at 13. He wanted to open a China, uh, uh, ice, cream sh ice cream shop when he grew up. He loved lizards. He loved, uh, oh, there's James Bond Prague. Ooh, another, <laughs> scary guy. this is the guy we ended up picking. So Heather, she's, she's posting on his Facebook page, I'm Heather, because Heather can't see her page. I would not allow her to see her page at all because we're doing it completely blind. So I'm in control of her page. I'm posting as Heather, and other people are posting as other people. You know what I mean? So we're talking to each other. And here she is. Here I am posting on Tim Braun's page, you know, that I just missed you and blah, blah, blah. Because we want him to look at her Facebook page. We're putting it in front of his nose. I'm posting on there, and we got responses from him and so on. So I'm like, I'm so excited. Look at all these smiley faces. I haven't learned how to do all those kind of stuff. So I don't really do this kind of stuff. But you have to. So I mean, see how they're, they're just constantly just explanation points. We had to really push it in front of the guy's face. Here he is. He's responding to us. 
And this is a go ahead. Because until he responded to us, I wasn't going to go with this guy. Because I need to make sure that he is seeing my Facebook page. Otherwise, what, you know, it doesn't really go anywhere. So here he is. They call everything in spirit. Now, then we start putting up all sorts of pictures. We wanted to have a storyline to tell about Andrew that he could find in Heather. So we put he had unusual pets. So I went on the internet. I took pictures with my phone of, of things on the internet that were made a little blurry and posted them up as they were his pets. And we named them and all this stuff. And we had a storyline that he, that uh, Heather's been having dreams lately, a lot more recently because the next door neighbor, Joe, died and Joe was the one who handled, who kept all this, the lizards and stuff. And they were, you know, really good friends. And, and now Joe, she's having all these dreams about Joe not uh, being able to find Andrew over in the spirit world. You know, it's, Anyway, so we're putting up all these pictures of people. This is a JREF cruise. This is DJ Grothy from the JREF over here on a cruise I went on. You can't tell who the people are, but they just let us put pictures up. And then we, I mean, it was, I was able to put pictures up. We could tag these people as if we knew who they were. And they, they were the other Facebook friends. And so it was great to be able to do that. So this is Mark and I. We did a seance uh, for either what? Anyway, so I want to tell you that the entire audio is right here. You can listen to it. It's, it's on YouTube right now. You can look and you can check it out and you can listen to all 52 minutes of Tim Braun talking to Heather. I have it transcribed and everything for you so you don't have to listen to him if you don't want to. And um, she went in $300 to talk to him and have him um, see her son Andrew. I can tell you that she saw Andrew perfectly clear. <laughs> he saw. Oh, he saw Andrew perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, Andrew rides a, a motorcycle or a bike. Um, yeah. He, there's something about a tree being planted. He loves Burger King and Cool Ranch Doritos. Oh, and apparently in the spirit world, you can have all the food you want. It just materializes. And it's not unhealthy, Jay. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Tell you the truth. Don't He's say. studying in school. <laughs> he saw nothing that was on the Facebook page because, again, we couldn't catch him on a hot read. He did not look at the Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. And I haven't revealed this yet, so you guys are kind of the first people to find they this out. They don't care anymore. Oh, he I does. don't think these psychics care because he could do it from cold reading. But darn it, he got it all wrong. Everything. He got nothing right. He said that Heather smoked. She doesn't. He said, he said that everything he told her, from the moment he opened his mouth and said he could see Andrew, he was lying from that moment. And I have it right here. So I'm waiting to hear from some attorneys. I'm sure I'm going to hear from his attorneys. But so listen to it while you can. Um, so basically, that was that. I'm hoping to sting these people. The only way I'm going to sting them is if a media source comes through and goes and contacts Chip Coffee and Tim Braun and says, hey, so what happened? You know, How did you manage to... Uh, uh, see these dead people who don't exist and talk to them for full conversations, you know, for 50 minutes. How is that possible if they don't exist, you know? And he can't say that he heard from Heather, that Heather gave him any information when she was sitting there. Because the only thing she knew, she had a little script I'd give her that said, your son's name is uh, Andrew. He died at the age of 13, three years ago. And uh, you live in San Francisco and, like, just bare bones. And she just agreed to everything he said because she didn't know what to what he was going to say if it was going to be something that was on the Facebook page until then we meshed the two together. Questions. Okay, so we're waiting for the big sting, and, and this has only been released like two days ago, so we don't we haven't heard from Chip and uh, Tim yet, but let's see what happens. But that's what I was trying to do. It sort of failed, sort of didn't. I don't know. We didn't get the hot read, but we got oh, amazing stuff anyway. Okay, a couple questions. So you think these guys are actually becoming smart and not intentionally not going into Facebook and yes. Twitter's and, and making sure they're doing just the cold? No, I don't think so. Mark and I have a different opinion on this. <laughs> I, think, I think that they don't bother because they don't have to. <coughs> because they can do it all just cold reading. Because this, I think they still do this. I know we have videos online of people we've caught, people have seen, they've caught them doing this kind of stuff like Mark talked to earlier. But it's not been controlled. I was trying to control for this. Mm -hmm. um, do you think public radio, like Ira Glass or one of those 
any of those people would be wonderful. I'm sure anything like that that gets it past our crowd. Yeah. Because I'm telling you guys, you're all skeptics. Do you think you're going to stop these people? No. <laughs> but I think that we're talking to, we're, I'm not out to get the audience. I'm not out to get these believers at all. I am only trying to tell them we're watching, we're, ca we're trying to catch you, and we're going to catch you, and when we catch you, it's going to be all over the media because everybody hates psychics. There was awesome. a man named H.L. Mankin who said, no one has ever lost money underestimating the taste of the American public. I, I, good luck to you and your time and effort, I, know. But I think people will continue to line up. Sure they will. Even when you have their pants down and their hair on fire. They'll show up. I don't, I don't know about the pants down and hair on fire. Okay. Why is it important to get a heart read? I mean, you have a case where, you know, they talk to somebody who doesn't really exist, who never ever die, why is it important to get a hot read? I, that's a really great question. Why is it important to get a hot read? I, well, because I it, our crowd already knows that this is, they're not getting well, anything. But oh, his editor wanted a hot read can I before she that? read I want story. a hot read. I want a hot read, too. I can answer that. Yeah, go ahead. Because when you start invading somebody's privacy by using their credit card information, or their Facebook, page. a lot more people that's crossing the line. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. So you know, if you're if just doing a, a lousy cold read and you're getting lucky hits, that's okay. But you start using people's private financial, and when you pay for a ticket in America, not in Britain, uh, there a, a person who sells a ticket is considered a merchant. That means they have access to your financial information as well as your private Well, interest. sort of, yeah. No, they do, because they can check and see if you've got money in the bank right. to pay for the tickets. So that's where, when you cross a line, that's when people start getting a little itchy about it, we hope, and it, but it needs to get out there. Jay? But checking someone's Facebook page doesn't necessarily give them access to your credit card credentials. No. The thing is, a hot read is unequivocally catching them red-handed. Yeah. But it only right. is if there's a control. So absolutely, but there's almost no other way that they would get that kind of specific information unless they were trolling a Facebook page to right. get it. My question to you, Susan, is with the things that you've done so far, isn't the obvious out that all these guys have, for example, Chip Coffee, couldn't you just say, you know what, you're right, I didn't get your son, but I got the son of the person behind you, and that's who I was reading. <laughs> well, that's possible, but we made it so obvious that it was... We made them go into depth, uh, more and more stuff, so there was no way it was aimed at anybody else. So he could have been pointing to me and talking to me right here, and then he could say, oh, my out was actually, I meant this That's guy. That's called piggybacking. Yeah, piggybacking. But we went so much in depth that it was obvious he was speaking to me. I mean, they, they have a lot of outs, which no doubt they would use, including its entertainment. But there was no entertainment when he was telling that girl's yeah. boyfriend was in the back of the room. But, but at, at least, you know, if... You know, examples like this are available. There's there's the chance that some people will think more critically about what's going on. It's not going to stop the other suckers, you know, from being born and getting in line. You know, but maybe some people will think more critically about what's going right. on. Right, right now, is, there's no more popular time right now to hate psychics. After Sylvia Brown, all the things she was doing, plus all the things that. Uh, Sally Morgan did where she called out that guy and told him he was her, her, her manager who was her husband was calling that guy and saying he was gay and telling him these awful things I and mean, he was just like slamming him that video went viral and right now people hate psychics I mean right now they see the harm okay a couple really quick questions and we gotta go aren't these guys probably wily enough, wily enough to look at when the Facebook page was created, and maybe notice you only have 15 friends as opposed to the usual 200, those kind of things. Right, we thought of those. Okay. We had, a, that's why we created the pages months ago. So okay. when we did the uh, Tim Braun, the pages were created in May, and we saw him in November. And then some of the pages were pages that I had created two or three years ago for something else. So we had pages that had some history. Plus, we did open up the page, and we opened it up, and we, we friended people with cat videos and everything all over the place. So we had uh, 80 or so friends by the time we were done. So are you flooding Facebook with these videos? No. I just released it yesterday, oh, uh, a couple days say, ago. You know, people can pass them around. Right. And they'll go everywhere. And also, if you tag it, will it go on his page? 
Yes. <laughs> I didn't do it. I, I told Mark, I said, I wonder if I should send that over to his Facebook page. <laughs> oh my God, yes. I, I'm just a little no, nervous let, about it. Let it. I was waiting for somebody else to do it, I guess. You try and right. get it pulled. You want to <laughs> get as much I'm as you want. Jerry? I'm sorry that you're violating Facebook's terms of... Uh, Probably. I mean, I know you will, but you're not worried about it. No. Because everybody does, Jim. But I think, too, they're, that they're just so confident in their ability to lie and deceive okay. that they don't mm -hmm. think they need real information. Right. And to Jerry, just make it up. Yeah, to Jerry's point about violating Facebook's page uh, fire, requirements, fire, let them take fire. my Facebook page away from me, my fake one. I don't care. <laughs> they can take a look at mine too. I use a different server, I use a different ISP, so it'd be really kind of hard. And we change these names. The names that are there, we change them. We can change them. Just like these guys, you get you get rid of them, they come back. Yeah, you know, they're, they're right there. So I guess we need to end right now. That's, if you want to talk no, to No, no, there's one more speaker. What do you need? No, no, I'm we're, I'm oh. ending. I'm oh, okay. I'm gone. <laughs> but you can talk to me about this later. Give her a hand, folks. <laughs>